We're Liz and Dennis, full-time RVers, eating, seeing, and RVing our way all across North America since 2017. After downsizing from a huge fifth wheel toy hauler to a class C RV in 2019, we hit the road to RV Mexico, where we spent the past five months. We recently returned to the USA, where we are trying to stay cool as we camp in the crazy Texas summer heat. This week, we take you with us as we fly back home to Florida to get our licenses Hi. renewed. Or so we think. We could have just flown back to Florida for nothing. Well, howdy there. Hope you're doing well. Hello, world. We are about to pull out of our campground that we stayed at last night. We pretty much found a random RV park. We stayed there one night, $30, full hookups, no Wi-Fi. Definitely was just like a stopover spot. We found it on the dirt, which if you aren't familiar with, it's an app that helps you play on campgrounds, find state parks, really cool places to stay. I wouldn't exactly say that this was one of the cooler places to stay, but hey, it was a spot overnight in between the state parks where we had reservations. We have a ton of errands to run today. We're gonna to be heading to CVS. We're also gonna fill up our water and get a few things from the grocery store. And then we have some really exciting packages arriving to an Amazon locker. They take glass and plastic at the Whole Foods. So we get rid of like 95% of this. Thank God. <laughs> Well, that was a bust. So yeah. CVS can only print the size for, specifically for the US passport. And the Mexican passport requirements or the picture needed for a visa for Mexico is smaller. So we either have to go to like a specialized passport agency that helps get different pictures for different countries. Or what we did was take the picture with the white background like they offer here at CVS on our phones and we're going to try and scale the pictures down. So if we print a four by six to CVS or a Walgreens photo department, they're already sized so that we can cut them exactly as the Mexican consulate requires. Let's go pick up our extra special packages. This is our first time at an Amazon Locker Hub like this. This is one of their big hubs where they ship all of the Prime stuff across the nation. And you just come in, you have a scan code, they put all of our packages into a box, and we open up the box, and we get all of our stuff. Also, there's so much stuff behind that door, it's insane. Getting packages delivered in Mexico is a little bit difficult. They do have Amazon, but it's more expensive because of import fees and taxes. It takes longer, and depending on where you're at, you might not be able to get a shipment. So we've kind of been holding off on a ton of stuff, and now that we're back in the US, we just bought all the things. All the things. All the things. All right. Let's take our entire cart out to the car. I'm sure there's nothing crazy as no. the amount of stuff you've seen. Guys, we have some very exciting stuff in these packages. Yeah. One thing extra in particular. Here. The RV is an absolute mess right now. We're gonna try to get these Amazon boxes back to the hub before we leave. I don't know if they're gonna take them. That would be a bummer if they don't, because we're gonna have to find a place to recycle them. And if we could just take all this stuff out of the boxes and give them back to them here, it would save us a whole lot of space. Mm-hmm. That's far past has officially paid for itself. Texas, um, for all of their state parks, like many other states, sells a pass that's 70 bucks a year, but then you don't pay entrance fees when you go to the park. So most of them are like 13 to $15 per person. So now that we've been to two different Texas state parks, my last one's falling down. Now that we've been to two different Texas state parks, it's already paid for itself. Oh, there it is. 
The first one. We didn't know which, which boss it was going to be. It was the first one. And it's like Christmas in July. This has been a long time coming for our channel. We have dreamed about having a drone for literally the entire time we've been doing YouTube. And now we got one. I've never flown a expensive drone before. So I'm slightly nervous to learn how to fly this, but I'm also very excited because we're gonna be getting some insanely good footage with this thing. And I just wanna give a little gratitude to our Patreon community because all of the pledges that we get from the Patreon community doesn't just fund our lifestyle. Like we have the real estate business for that. That's what pays for us to live on the road. But the Patreon community is what helps fund it didn't pay for this whole thing. Not since we've started, okay? This, this thing is expensive. <laughs> but it helps fund uh, like equipment upgrades and all kinds of stuff that just make our channel better for everyone to watch. So we really appreciate anyone who becomes a patron. Really, buddy? There's a box, he's gonna play. <laughs> oh yeah! This, I don't really know how this is gonna work out. Hopefully it will be as good as the reviews say on Amazon, but this is a 12 volt fan that's gonna run off of our batteries while we're boondocking or when we're not um, to keep the air circulating up in the overcap bunk area where we sleep. There's two hot bodies up in that dome and it's the highest part of the RV. So it gets a little toasty up there even when the AC is on until it kicks back in again. So this is gonna help keep the air moving so today is already starting out very interesting because we're headed to the airport and we're staying at state park the state park folks don't want to let our uber in because you have to pay a fee you have to pay the day use fee we're doing a 15 minute walk to the front with our luggage and then the uber is going to pick us up there and we're headed Out, to the airport right, outside the gates we'll fill you in once we get to the airport on what we're doing flying during a pandemic Let's explain why we're actually at the airport. We don't want to be flying during a pandemic. We know that this isn't exactly putting ourselves in the best position, but we have to at this point. We have to go back to Florida to renew our license in person because they're starting the Real ID program, which puts a little star into the upper right-hand corner of most likely the ID you already have, like mine. I have the new looking ID, which looks like a new passport, but I don't have the star. So I have to show up in person to be able to take a new picture for the real ID. We've tried calling, we've tried to see if we could get it mailed to us, but they have insisted that we have to come in person since both of ours have expired. So that's why we're here, to get our licenses renewed. We're going back for just pretty much a day and a half for the sole purpose of that, and we're coming right back to Austin. All right, let's catch this plane. Today is not going well. The whole point of us coming back to Florida was to get our real IDs. We did not know that you need all of this paperwork, including a birth certificate, a passport, to prove that you're a real citizen. So we have copies of stuff that we randomly put together, but Dennis doesn't have his passport. I don't have my passport. So we'll see how this goes. We could have just flown back to Florida for nothing. So we got a super nice lady at the DMV who explained to us how we can quickly get a copy of my birth certificate 
printed at the uh, Vital Services, which is right around the corner from the DMV. Thank goodness. So we're gonna go get my birth certificate now and then come back and I'll probably be waiting here for who knows how long, but at least I'm gonna get my driver's license renewed today. So when I got out in front of the Department of Health, which the Vital Statistics, where you get your birth certificates printed, is inside of, the lady just simply waves this in front of me and says you're gonna have to call them because the office is not open. The office hasn't been open since March. The highlighted instructions say, call the number, press option four, and talk to them. I talked to them. She annoyedly told me that they had been closed since March and that I'm gonna have to apply online and it takes about three to five business days to process the order. Then if we wanna pay for overnight shipping, it'll be overnighted after they process the order. In other words, you ain't getting it today. We're gonna have to fly back here in August. Not what we were hoping for. However, I did get my ID. So the plot thickens. Um, this little piece of paper that is now stapled to my ID uh, stretched me out for 60 days so I can drive without being arrested for having an expired license. So what do you do when life gives you lemons? You go get some Kawa coffee and go to the park with your niece. Hi. Hi. I keep playing. Really? Here's the thing to talk. <laughs> 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 uh, you're a silly goose. That's what I needed, Layla. I needed you to make me laugh. Today's been a rough day. So we're grabbing some lunch, we're gonna finish running some errands. But at least we get to come to one of our favorite restaurants. This place is called Bodega. It's right next to the Tropicana Fields. So if you're coming for a game, which I suggest if you're in St. Pete, make a stop here. It is delicious and worth every dollar. Even if you don't like baseball, like I don't, uh, you're gonna come down here and drink at some of the breweries anyway, most likely. And it's right around the corner from Green Bench. Guess we're not sitting down. No. There's that. Uh, eating the truck. <laughs> Sit on the tailgate. Lechon. Yum. You're missing out though. This this is where it's at. <laughs> the pollo asado. It's pineapple coconut marinated chicken. Ooh. What about a tempe. Oh. It's really hot, but it's so good. What? Mm-hmm, baby, baby. Here. You want to go half? Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't get a free one yet. So worth it. Their olive oils are the best. They have different flavored ones. We got a traditional olive oil and we got the garlic olive oil, which is my favorite. I've been saving these bottles legit since Mexico because I don't want to get olive oil anywhere else. One of the best things about coming home is getting to spend time with family. I wish we weren't having to come home for our ID, but the benefit is getting to spend time with my niece, my sister, brother-in-law, my mom. We would love to see even more of our family, but unfortunately with COVID, we're trying to keep our distance, really only seeing the immediate family that we kind of absolutely have to. And it's such a treat. And tonight we're at my sister's house. She is an amazing gardener who has turned her entire backyard and front yard into an edible garden. She's growing all different types of fruits and vegetables and herbs. And it's pretty amazing to see what she's done. Last year, or almost a year and a half ago now, we helped her start her own YouTube channel as well, showing people how to grow sustainable and organic food in their Florida garden. So if you're into gardening and you live in Florida or hot climates, I definitely suggest checking out her channel, The Urban Harvest. Of course, I'm gonna plug her, she's my sis. I've loved what she's doing with her chickens and her garden. We're actually gonna be eating here tonight and even though it's in the dead of summer, we get to have salad from her actual garden. Pretty exciting. It's, it's as fresh as it can get. And then what do the chickens give us? Hey! Oh, is somebody feeding? Yeah, I got girls. 
We're back <laughs> after a very short trip with our family and a little hiccup getting our IDs. We're heading back to Texas. Dennis will be back to St. Pete in one month when we got a new appointment for him to get his ID. <sighs> 2020. So we had a very long delay. We were just sitting, I guess, on the tarmac, right? For like an hour and a half because there was a complication with some electrical, I don't know, something. But it's fixed. We fueled up and now we're leaving but that meant we were gonna miss our connecting flight. So luckily I just asked the flight attendant and it's the same pilots that are on the next flight. So we're accommodated. We won't be delayed or have to stay overnight in Atlanta. Very thankful. We're happy to be back. We missed you. We made it back much later than expected. It was about 9.30 when we actually got back from our Uber ride to our RV. But our RV was here. In good standing order, AC on, kitty cats were safe, everything was good. We just made dinner and went to bed. This was definitely a different video for us having to fly back. It's not our normal way of travel and lots of unexpected occurrences, but we're gonna chalk it up to lesson learned. If anything, it taught us that we need to be better prepared and do more research if we're, especially if we're going out of our way for something. That was on us, <laughs> for sure. <sighs> and a kitty cat to show happy we're home. Oh, you gonna fight me now? You gonna fight me now? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna leave you here. We hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and make sure that you've subscribed to our channel. We're gonna pick up next week exploring McKinney Falls and then we have some exciting fun plans coming for you soon. It involves a boat, a lake, tiny homes. It's gonna be awesome. Are you chewing that? Who chews the paper? No. This turkey chews the paper, that's what he does. What are you Ollie. doing? Oliver. What are you doing? Catch you next week. By the way, nobody has said howdy except Liz the entire time we've been in Texas. That is not true. The other day someone drove by and said howdy to me and I, I got all excited because I was like, oh my God, people really say this here. <laughs> but I'd say the majority of people aren't just going around saying howdy. I'm so excited. I got my Amazon packages and I like it. Uh, Was that ridiculous? Yes. <laughs> but a good ridiculous, right? Sure. <laughs> you better be a butthole. Don't be a butthole. <laughs> What's he doing, Pilar? Oh. Sweet pea.